So I just want to give a quick uh, overview of what exactly is the Indie Web. And um, this is to set the stage for um, what we'll be talking about the rest of the weekend. Start with, does the, does the thought of using Facebook the rest of your life make you uncomfortable? Um, I have a feeling the answer is yes for most of us here, otherwise we probably wouldn't be here. Um, and I'm sure a lot of us have thought about what happens to our services, our, our content, when the services we use shut down. Um, this is a nice little collection of some, some uh, of the older generation of services, but you know it keeps happening. These are these are some newer ones that have shut down more recently. And. Uh, of course, even before services shut down, um, they often start limiting what you can do in the service. So um, Twitter, for example, is a great, uh, a great case of this. They started out as a super open platform for sending short messages and then have slowly taken away the ability for building apps on top of, on top of the platform. And it's turned into something quite different than what it started out as. Uh, relatively recently, Instagram made some terms of service changes that locked out a lot of apps from using the platform as well. So um, we've all felt the consequences of that change as well. And um, services can do sometimes do surprising things with your data too that you wouldn't have expected. But the good news is that there are a lot of possibilities for how we can avoid these problems and uh, use our own tools that are much better. Uh, you can join somebody else's server, uh, like uh, Mastodon or Diaspora, where, where there's somebody will run a community server, and um, you can make an account there and join that. Uh, you can join a service with a revenue model, like micro.blog, which is a recent uh, Kickstarter project that has just launched. Um, and hopefully that has a better chance of sticking around, because it actually has a business model built into it, instead of just another free service that's going to shut down. Um, and uh, of course, you can host your own uh, website on using tools like WordPress or Known. And uh, that's a great option if that's something you're comfortable with. Um, or if you don't like the idea of running CMSs, you can use a static site generator and just publish HTML files on the web. Um, if you want particular features and control over exactly what's on your website, uh, you can build your own site from scratch. And I know a lot of us here do that, myself included. This is an example of, uh, of some posts on my website, um, my Foursquare check-ins, which are now on my site, and I'm really happy those are, those are there now. Um, I, uh, these are, this is my website when I'm replying to people. And uh, the, the neat thing is that these posts I'm replying to are actually across totally different websites, uh, different services. One of them is Twitter, one of them is uh, homegrown blog. Uh, I also publish bike rides on my website because I want to do that and I recognize not everybody else wants to do that, but that's fine. I can do it because it's my website. The really neat part is that even, even when we all have different websites and are using different tools, we can still talk to each other online. And this is, uh, this is a little example of um, I replied to a post from Barnaby and uh, you can see my post on my website replying to his, and you can see his post on his website with my comment below it. And we have totally different tools we're using. We're not using the same software, and uh, they're both on different domain names. And it's pretty neat, neat that we can still talk to each other. You can even still talk to people on Twitter and Facebook by using your own website. And this is, uh, this is a post I wrote on my site on the left, and then on the top is a copy I sent to Facebook, and on the bottom is a copy I sent to Twitter. And you can see people were commenting and interacting with the copies on, on Twitter and Facebook, and uh, those interactions got brought back into my website, so everything gets rolled up into one place uh, that is in, in my control. So we have a few of these things pretty well figured out. Um, these are some of the specs that are, uh, are building blocks that are uh, pretty well established in the community and are actually W3C um, recommendations and uh, what I mentioned in Micropub are, are W3C, W3C recommendations. PubSub PubHub is uh, now called WebSub, and it's well along that path. And um, we're working on a lot more. The, the link at the bottom, indieweb.org slash building blocks, links to a whole host of different uh, small pieces like this, which you can use to add various features to your website. 
Um, but more important than that are the IndieWeb principles. And um, starting with build for yourself. Build something that you want to build, not something that somebody else tells you to build. And uh, UX and design are more important than protocols. This, it, this is not, you know, it's not interesting unless it actually looks good. So we like to focus on uh, presentation first and then let that inform the development of protocols and how things work uh, underneath. Modularity, so you'll find a lot of building blocks and a lot of small pieces where um, they, uh, you, you can jump in at just one place and, and tackle just one problem today and then tomorrow we'll focus on the next one. And the plura, plura, sorry, a plurality of projects is really important. And this is, uh, we want to encourage more diverse implementations of things instead of trying to get everybody to adopt a single uh, application or software stack. And that helps the ecosystem as a whole, and that helps all of the protocols and specs become better as well. And uh, there's another seven or so principles on, on the wiki you can find there. So that is a quick intro to what is the Indie Web, and um, hopefully gives you a little bit more of an idea of why, why we're here and what we're doing. And uh, I will, with that, I will hand it back to Tontek.